What is up guys, it's Dylan from Redneck Tuners, back with another video today. I got something real cool, simple, it's for you guys, just so you guys can um, do this yourself. I know some, some cars or, or even vehicles, boats, things like that, they don't have this and it's frustrating. So I'm going to be showing you how to put a USB fast charging port in any car or vehicle or anything that's battery powered. Super simple, um, um, basically to replace your cigarette lighter. Um, I'm doing it in the 240 today because my radio doesn't charge my phone at all it, it just plugs and says it's charging but it doesn't charge so we're going to get this all installed and it's all for about 10 bucks roughly you can get them cheaper this one's cool as well so i'll show you some of the features on it we're going to jump right into it like i said super quick super simple so let's get to it so in the car here like i said i do have my stereo this doesn't charge it very well um so i'm going to try to install mine the best way to start is to locate your cigarette lighter if you have one if not you can always make a, a hole um, this is mine here um, it, it like it doesn't work and if it does it's barely anything so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with an actual usb port and the usb port that i chose is this one from amazon i will link it in the description i believe it's about 10 bucks and, and i have prime so it's free shipping but basically it is a voltmeter as well as a dual usb 3.0 port um, and it is fused with the wiring that it comes with. It does come with an inline fuse, so you don't have to worry about it um, drawing too much power or anything like that. And the way we're going to wire it is, is pretty simple. Um, but yeah, this should this should fit fairly well. I'm hoping that everything kind of goes smooth here, like this, or I'll probably do it like this. But yeah, anyway. So first step: locate this. See how you can get behind it. Um, for me, I have to take the console out, so I'm going to do that, and then we'll jump back into this. Now, for my case, this cigarette lighter pops out and it has a clip on the back of it um, and my clip it's kind of hard to see because I didn't pull the console all the way out but my clip has a supplied hot and ground it's a red and a black wire the hot is the red the ground is the black um, and that is all we need for this setup is to tap into ignition hot which would be that red and the ground so basically mine pops out this is a little thick for this slot i'm going to see if maybe i can get it through if not i'm gonna to have to widen this up pop this in um and then we, we can go from the uh the wiring aspect we can go from there but yeah let's start on this so the best method that i found was take a file well there's better methods but the best method that i found because i don't have a dremel if you have a dremel this will take you all but 15 seconds you just got to open up the diameter on this car some cars don't need it uh mine does I might have to take a little bit more off, but it fits in there a little snug and then I can push it all the way down. And basically they supply you with a retainer clip that you put under just to hold it in, make sure. So try not to make the hole too big or else this retainer clip means nothing. So just enough to slide it through, get your retainer clip all the way up there and then we can work on the wiring. So I'm gonna try to explain this in the simplest terms I can. Um, when you plug this in, it, it automatically comes pre-wired with your connectors here for the back of it negative is your black wire that's your ground positive is your red wire and like i said the red wire does have a fuse on it so you don't have to worry about taking too much power or, or ruining anything else like that so it comes with an inline fuse plus if you're wiring it to your cigarette lighter uh chances are that's fused as well if it's not that's a little scary um but double the safety can't hurt anybody anyways it comes pre-wired with these um kind of ring connectors here you can run this on a ground just like this and then you can run this to your battery which is what it's meant for but in my case and a lot of your guys' cases your battery is probably in your trunk i mean in your hood and you don't want to run this all the way there that's too tedious um so if you do not have a plug that you're splicing in right here which like i said mine has a hot and a, a ground that i'm going to splice into you can use something like your radio you can use um if you have a mirror switch, or actually, no, sorry, not the mirror switch. Uh, you could do your radio. You could do switches up here. You could run it to something else like a switch, um, as long as you have a hot and a ground. A ground can be any piece of metal. Um, it could be one of these like pieces right here. I have my radio grounded there. Um, you can run it anywhere. The power is where you're going to want to splice into. But make sure when you're splicing into power that you're doing into an ignition-only power source, which would be something like your radio. Because if you have it on just constant battery, this is gonna take this is gonna take power from it when the car's off. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a oops, I just threw it. I'm gonna use a vampire clip style to splice in 
uh, to my harness here. So basically I'm gonna cut these off so we don't have any live open connections. I'm gonna uh, butt them up, make sure they're not there's no uh, exposed wires. And then I'm going to slide this on here. I'm gonna splice into the hot on here and I'm gonna splice into the ground on there. And that should be the extent of my wiring. Hopefully everything's good. Um, and hopefully my cigarette wire still is intact. If not, we can take a different route, but that is the simplest way to explain how to do this. There's two wires. You can do a ground very easily. The, best, the hardest part, if you don't have wiring showing like this, is to um, find yourself a hot that's the ignition power. So let's do this and um, I'll come back to it. So I ran into a little mishap with my connector for my cigarette lighter. Um, that was the reason my cigarette lighter wasn't working is because those that wiring is bad. There must be, maybe I blew a fuse or something that I haven't looked at or it's just a bad connection. Um, but anyways, instead of trying to diagnose that, I, I basically just ran the wires to my radio, ignition hot and ground for my radio. Um, and the simplest way I can try to explain this to you guys is use these connectors. These are awesome, by the way. Um, there's two wires. Like I said, there's two wires. There's a hot and a ground. Run your ground to anywhere metal. My, I have a ground here already, so that makes my life easier. Sorry, I was blocking it. I make my life easier. So I, I spliced it into there. Then my stereo has a hot, which is my ignition hot. Like I said, I spliced that right into there. And then I ran the wires to where they would fit. And what basically what you do after that, like I said, since it is ignition power, we're going to take a look at this and it lights up it says we're reading about 12.1 volts um mind you my car is having an alternator issue so i don't know exactly what yours will read 12 is good um but yeah so that is working perfect now this, the best thing to do is tidy up your wiring so you're not getting any jumping or anything like that and get this thing to sit right and then we'll go back from there so I got it all buttoned up here. I kind of did it with the curvature of my, my dash. So it looks a little crooked here, but, or my, my, my console, um, but it works. I just turned it on and it told me while the car was running, it had 13.7 volts. So that's pretty good. Um, I tucked the wiring under here. I ran a zip tie just to keep it away from my shifter here. But yeah, honestly, this is very, very in easy install. This can be done with anybody. Literally, I got those clips at Harbor Freight and this took me a total of 10 minutes, not even. Um, this can be done on, like I said, a boat, a golf cart, car, anywhere. As long as you can splice into power and ground, you can get yourself a USB port and put it in there. Like I said, it is fused, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm going to put the radio back together, put everything back the way it was, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the final product. All right, the car is all tidied up. I got everything back together. It is running right now, and I do have my phone plugged in currently. Um, I don't have another device right now because it's just me and I film on my phone. Um, but I really, you just take my word for it. I promise you my phone is charging. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's doing great. It's reading 13.4 volts with all my electronics on right now. Um, and that is awesome. So now we can see what our voltage is. I don't exactly know how accurate this is, um, but it seems to be doing well. Every time I unplug the phone, it does jump up a little bit. And um, yeah, it's charged my phone great so far. So I think we'll just say this is a success. So ladies and gentlemen, that is gonna do it for today's video. Like I said, this is a super easy install. I know that anybody, if they just put their mind to it, can do honestly anything, but this is the easiest install I can honestly say, especially if you have the splicing clips. If not, if you're running it straight to a battery, like if you're on a boat or something, or even, even a golf cart, you have multiple batteries, that they give you two connectors. You just slap them right onto the, to the positive and the negative and mount it wherever you want to mount it. Um, it's a little bit, I, I, not even difficult, but it's a little bit different in the car. Like I said, you have to splice into where you find a ground and where you find a, a um, ignition power source. But other than that, it, like I said, super easy. I'm very excited about this. I can actually charge my phone now in the car. Um, and I can charge my camera if I need to. There are two slots. So who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use it for something else. Um, but yeah, this is awesome. I love it. And the fact that it comes with a, a voltmeter as well is kind of cool. Cause I mean, I don't have one in this car, but my alternator is acting up. So I guess it would help me in some way to check on it when I'm driving and see how it goes. But, uh, yeah. So basically, thank you so much for watching. Um, leave me a comment if you, if you found this helpful or like this video so I can, uh, push it up to the, to the top so people can watch this and be informed as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This would help me out a lot. 
Um, I have a, a bunch of other videos on car stuff. If you want to check out my channel, there's a lot of cool things. I'll, I'll put the, uh, the links up here so you can check that out as well. And don't forget to uh, check me out on Instagram. I do now have a TikTok, same thing as redneck underscore tuners. So check me out. I got a cool videos there and there should be more to come. So thank you guys so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.